do you know what this is? Why are you holding a wedding dress? In fact, that's my wedding dress. What are you doing with it? Do you want to see what would happen to your dress if I set it on fire? I'm sure that it'd go up in flames beautifully. Burn my dress? That's a crazy thing to do. Please don't. Why would you do something like this? Trouble busters. Hey, Alan, what should we give our wedding guests as a gift for them to take home? You know what'd be really cool? If we gave our guests some special flavored potato chips. Potato chips? I know that they're your favorite, but uh, not everyone loves potato chips like you, so uh, maybe something else? Are you sure about that? I've never met anyone that doesn't like potato chips. Well, they're oily and salty. We should come up with something healthier. I'm bummed out. I thought that you'd think that it was a great idea, too. Besides, you have more important things to think about. We don't have much time till our wedding day. And if we hand out potato chips to everyone, you're going to go up to them in the middle of our wedding and ask them to give some to you. I wouldn't do anything like that, don't you trust me? I'd make sure that I have my own bag of potato chips at the wedding so that I don't have to ask our guests to give me any. I sure hope so, because you ate all the potato chips in my house. Oh, you found out about that. <laughs> Yes, I did. You can't hide anything from me. My name is Helen, and I'm obsessed with potato chips. But right now, I'm pretty obsessed with my fiancé, Alan, and planning our wedding, too. I'm so excited about my wedding. I'm busy with the planning, but having a lot of fun at the same time. I also need to make some time to meet Alan's parents. I'm pretty nervous about that, and I hope that they like me. And the day to meet Alan's parents arrived. I'm so nervous. My stomach is acting up. You have nothing to be nervous about. My parents will love you just like I do. Just be yourself. I was too nervous to eat breakfast this morning. Really? That's so unlike you. Yes, I'm fine. I usually eat five bags of potato chips, but today I only had three. I'm a little off my game today. What? Is that how much you eat every day? Yes, potato chips are my staple diet. You shouldn't eat so much junk food. It's not good for your health. I think that your stomach is acting up from the oil of the potato chips. It probably has nothing to do with you being nervous today. Are you sure about that? Because potato chips usually have no effect on my stomach. But now that I come to think of it, maybe they do. We should get going now. Okay, I then went to Alan's house to meet his parents for the first time. Thank you for having me today. It's so lovely to meet you. Alan's told me so much about you. Hello, Helen. Nice to meet you in person as well. Make yourself at home. Alan, Helen is very beautiful, just like you told us. Oh, you're too kind. You are beautiful, Helen. Stop it. You're making me blush. I brought over a bottle of wine since Alan told me that you both drink wine. That's very kind of you, Helen. Thank you. I'll open the bottle later for us to share. I'm glad that you like it. Let me get dinner on the table. I also bought a few kinds of potato chips. Alan tells me that you love them. Wow, thank you. That's really cool of you, Mom, but uh, you're gonna have as many potato chips as you like. I will. I'm so happy. I just love potato chips. But you already had three bags this morning. Mom, Dad, please don't allow Helen to eat any more potato chips. It's not good for her health. Today is the first time that we're meeting Helen, and we wanted her to do as she pleases. Helen, don't mind Alan. Thank you. Alan's parents seemed really nice, and I was getting along with them fine. Alan was right. I had nothing to be nervous about. His potato chips are delicious. I'm so glad that we have that in common. I recommend using mayonnaise as a dipping sauce. That sounds good. Let me try it. You're right. These potato chips taste even better with the mayo. Uh, you two, don't get carried away. I can see Helen and your mother getting along well. I'm so happy. You're lucky to be marrying someone like Helen. You two make a great couple. <laughs> By the way, Helen. Yes? What is it that you do for work? I'm an illustrator. That sounds interesting. Yes, I love that it allows me to be creative. I'd love to see your illustrations sometime. Better yet, would you be able to draw a facial caricature of me? I'd love to. Please draw me with a pretty face, though. Yes, of course. Where do you commute to for work, then? Actually, I work from home because my hours are very flexible. I work as a freelancer. Mmm, I see. I used to be a full-time employee at a company and was doing work as an illustrator on the side, but since I was doing pretty well as an illustrator, I decided to make that my main job. Working from home, huh? What does working from home mean, though? Helen is an independent freelancer and gets project-related work from her clients. She makes more money than I do, and on top of that, she has the freedom to work from home. She's a really popular illustrator. I'm not that popular, but I do have a stable income, and I'm very grateful for that. Okay, so you won't be relying on Alan's income, then. You're financially independent, huh? Our neighbor Ted claims to work from home, but in reality, he lays us around his house all day and barely makes any money. I heard that he still relies on his parents for money. Yeah, I think he earns money from affiliate marketing, but I guess his income is unstable. Poor guy. Well, you have nothing to worry about because Helen is making good money unlike Ted. Right now, Helen has her own apartment, and her rent is pretty expensive too. But being a freelancer sounds risky to me. Helen, would you consider working full-time at a company again? Isn't it more secure? Hmm... 
I just think that it'd be best for the both of you. Why don't you speak to your former manager about getting your old job back? Well, um... Mom, you're not listening to me. Helen's business is going really well. You have nothing to be concerned about. But Alan, what will our neighbors think if they hear that Helen works from home? We certainly don't want them to think that she's in a similar situation to Ted. What do you care about what our neighbors think? Besides, you can explain it to them if they don't get it. You should be proud of Helen, if anything. I mean, she makes more money than I do. Alan... Helen, if you're marrying into our family, would you reconsider going back to your old company? I think that'll be difficult for me. I love what I do now and I can't let my clients down. But will you please do this for us? This is what's best for our family. Being an illustrator doesn't even sound like a real job. I want people to take you seriously. I'm in complete agreement with my wife here. Um... You two are being ridiculous! Why does Helen's profession matter to you so much? This was the first time that I saw Ellen get really angry and shouting. Helen has a great job and you have no right to criticize her like this. Not many people are able to find a dream job like her. As her family, we should fully support her. To get to where she is now, she was working two jobs before her illustration business took off. How much money can you make as an illustrator anyways? Are you sure she's not sleeping with her clients to get them to pay for her or something else? I think that's highly probable. You can't make decent money by just drawing illustration. That's a crazy thing to say. Of course I would do no such thing. I can't believe how this day is turning out to be. This was supposed to be a happy day for Helen and I. I didn't think that my parents were so shallow. I'm so disappointed. I don't want you two to come to our wedding anymore. In fact, I'd like to cut all ties with you. Calm down, Alan. There's no need for you to do that. We were only trying to look out for you. We want what's best for you and for Helen. That's right. We're only trying to protect you. We're not saying these things to hurt you or Helen. Helen, we've wasted enough time here. Let's go! Um, okay, thank you for having us. Goodbye. Wait, don't go! Alan ignored his mother and pulled my hand, signaling to leave the house with them. Helen, I'm so sorry about all the ridiculous and hurtful things my parents said to you. I'm so ashamed. I don't want to have anything to do with them after what they did. Uh-huh. I hope that you're not reconsidering marrying me after meeting my parents. I don't blame you. That's not how I feel at all. I'm marrying you, not your parents. I love you more than anything in this world, and I can't wait to get married to you. Helen. And I was really happy when you defended me like that in front of your parents. Oh. Never had anyone do something like that for me. It made me realize how much you support me. It's going to be hard not to have your parents' blessing, but I think that we'll be happy together. Thanks, Helen. I was more in love with Alan now, knowing that he would do anything to make me feel safe. I could depend on him to protect me from any undesirable situation that might come our way. I was shocked by Alan's parents' words, but over time, I'll get over it. One week later, I received a phone call from Alan telling me that he was coming over to my house to see me, and that he was bringing his parents with him. We're so sorry for all the terrible things that we said to you last week. I'm so sorry too. I hope that you'll forgive us. They seemed to really regret what they had said to me last week and were asking for my forgiveness. My parents wanted to come see you and apologize for their rude behavior. You don't have to accept their apologies if you don't want to though. We feel really bad about what we said to you. After our conversation, I looked up your profession and realized that being a successful illustrator is a very coveted position to be in. We shouldn't have said those things without fully understanding your situation. We've come here to ask you not to cut all ties with us, please. I mean, we'd like to be a part of your family, especially when you have a child together. Please, do forgive us. Well, thank you for coming over. Does this mean that you'll forgive us? Are you sure? Yes, I'd like all of us to get along. Thank you for being so understanding, Helen. Thank you. Are you sure about this, Helen? Yes, I don't want to fight with your parents, and it seems that they really regret what they said to me last week, so... After that, Alan and I were able to go ahead with the wedding preparations as planned. One day, I was out for lunch with my close friend, Melanie. We used to work at the same company before I became a freelancer. I'm so thrilled that you and Alan are getting married. I can't wait to attend your wedding. You guys are so in love, and it's so sweet. My former boss is coming to the wedding as well. I think it's really nice of him to do so. I think that he secretly had a crush on you. I don't think so. He's married to his beautiful wife. Life, remember? Either way, Alan is the man for you. I hope that I don't embarrass you by crying too much at your wedding. <laughs> I can so see you crying at the wedding. Oh, by the way, I have a present for you. Some potato chips. I bet you've never tried this flavor before. It's an acquired taste, so not sure if you'll like it though. Thanks, Melanie. I'll let you know my thoughts after trying it. It's a very thoughtful present. I love trying out new flavors. You're a great friend. <laughs> I have some more gifts that I'd like to give you, but it's still a surprise. I opened the bag of potato chips that Melanie had given me as soon as I got home. It really was an acquired taste. At first, I didn't like it at all, but after a while, I started to like it. How bizarre. I gave some to Alan, but he said that they were gross and threw up in the bathroom. A few more months passed and it was finally the day of our wedding. I was so excited. I can't wait to see you in your wedding dress today. You're going to look gorgeous. I just know it. Well, thank you, Alan. I can't wait to see you in your tuxedo either. 
I'm going to refrain from eating potato chips today because I don't want to get any grease on my dress. I can't believe that you're obsessing about potato chips on your wedding day. I made the right choice in not having potato chips at our wedding. I'm really bummed about that, but I guess I can go one day without potato chips. May I ask the groom to go to the change room now? Yes, yeah, see you again soon, Ellen. <laughs> yep. I also went to the changing room to get my wedding dress. Um, what? Where's the dress? It's gone. What's wrong? Oh, it's nothing. Could you please wait here for a few more minutes? Uh, okay. I was concerned because the wedding staff seemed really nervous about something. What was it? Hi, Helen. Oh, hello. You're here earlier than expected. I came to show you something. Okay, what is it? We're going to do a video call with my wife now. Okay. Hello, Helen. How are you? Hello, I'm great. Do you know what this is? Why are you holding a wedding dress? In fact, that's my wedding dress. What are you doing with it? Yes, it's your wedding dress. Good eye. Why do you have my wedding dress and where are you now? I'm thinking of having a bonfire here. Why? I don't understand. Do you want to see what would happen to your dress if I set it on fire? I'm sure that it'd go up in flames beautifully. Burn my dress? That's a crazy thing to do. Please don't. Why would you do something like this? Well... Stop! Please stop! I'm trying to prove my point that this dress is too luxurious for you. You need to make more money if you want to wear such a fancy dress on your wedding day. I know that you bought this expensive dress using Alan's money. Well, you're wrong! I paid for that dress! As you watch this dress burn, you should think about all of the sacrifices Alan is making for you. Three, two, one. Please stop! Don't do this! Fire! Come on, burn! What has she done? My wedding dress! It was one of a kind! <laughs> You don't deserve to wear a wedding dress like this, Helen. And I don't think that you deserve to marry Alan, either. We think that you should call off this wedding for everyone's sake. <laughs> How can you do this to me? What have I ever done to you? <laughs> Alan's evil mother burned my dress and that was the end of it. I really loved that dress. I was starting to think that I should call off the wedding like Alan's parents suggested. I couldn't have a wedding without my dress. I felt bad for my wedding guests, but I hoped that they would understand once I told them my wedding dress was gone. That <laughs> was so much fun. It really was. I had a good laugh. We really fooled Helen when we apologized to her the other day. We were just building up to this moment. I hope that Alan thanks us later for saving him from marrying the wrong girl. Now that the wedding is going to be cancelled, let's go home and have something to drink. That's a great idea. <sighs> I've been looking all over for you. You're Alan's parents, aren't you? Yes, we are. Maybe he help you with something. The wedding is about to start. I think that you should be seated at your table now. I thought that the wedding's been canceled, though. Yes, that's right. Are you trying to tell us that the wedding is still on? Alan's parents headed to the wedding venue. Huh? They didn't cancel. But what is Helen going to do without her wedding dress? We burnt it, remember? May we ask you to stand for the bride and groom? I then entered the room wearing a pink dress. Helen looks stunning in her dress. I agree. She looks like a princess. What's going on here? Where did Helen get that dress? How did she find a dress at the last minute? Helen's parents were so confused. They had no idea how I had pulled off the wedding even after they had burned my dress. The two of them came over to speak to Alan and I once our reception started. Where did you get that pink dress? I'd like to know as well. We burnt your dress. You two are despicable. My friend delivered the dress to me. I see. Why would she do that? Because she's my best friend and she cares for me. Right, Melanie? Yes, that's right. I don't get it. How did Melanie find this dress in so little time? Melanie's a famous fashion designer. Oh, really? She was the one that designed my white dress as well. The one that you burned. I loved that dress, but Melanie didn't. So she was secretly designing a second dress for me as a surprise, which is the pink dress I'm wearing now. I'm glad that I was able to finish this dress in time. I like this dress much better than the other one. Thank you so much for designing this beautiful dress for me. You've really made my day. I wouldn't have been able to go ahead with the wedding if it hadn't been for you. So bummed out about the dress that was burned because I loved that one too. I'm so happy to hear that. Our plan failed. Bummer. We weren't able to put a stop to this wedding. Just to let you know, we've been recording this entire conversation. Why would you do such a thing? We're going to play this recording to all of our wedding guests at the end of our reception today. Don't do that, Alan. That would be reckless of you. And after that, we're submitting the recording to the police as evidence. We're your parents. You don't want us to get in trouble, do you? I no longer consider you to be my parents. Today is the last day that I'll be seeing you. I should have never believed your fake apologies and cut ties with you two sooner. Don't say that, Alan. We did this for you. Alan, this is all your fault. Ugh. Helen's mother tried to give me a hard shove. Helen, watch out! Melanie! Melanie stood in front of me so that I wouldn't get hurt and ended up on the floor instead of me. And because of this, her glasses broke. Dare 
do you shove me like that, you bitch? Huh? Melanie's really pissed off now. Whenever Melanie took off her glasses, she became a completely different person. You're going to pay for this, bitch! I'm gonna make sure that the police arrest your sorry asses. First you burned the dress that I designed for Helen, and then you tried to push her onto the floor and hurt her. How could you? This dress was one of a kind designed especially for Helen. The dress cost as much as a house would. Good luck paying for all the damages that you caused. This is a bad joke, right? Why would I joke about something like that? Melanie's not kidding. That's how much that dress cost. People would kill to have a dress designed by Melanie. She's that famous and popular. We had no idea that the dress was so expensive and designed by someone so famous. It's your fault for not being able to recognize Ho Couture when you see it. Now get out of here before we call the cops on you. You both don't belong here. Let go of me. Let go of my wife. Well, you owe us $300,000 for that dress. And with that, Alan's parents were kicked out of our wedding venue. Melanie, here are your glasses. They're shattered. Thanks, Helen. My glasses may be broken, but I can still see using them. I guess this will have to do for today until I can get them fixed. Yes. Was I a little too harsh on Alan's parents? No, you were fine. Thanks for helping us out. You were like Superwoman. Very strong and cool. Now that my parents are gone, let's get back to our wedding party. So this is what happened to Alan's parents after our wedding. All of our wedding guests listened to the recording of our conversation with Alan's parents. Our guests were livid and didn't want to have anything to do with Alan's parents after that. Alan and I cut all ties with his parents too for obvious reasons. And we notified the police about what they'd done to my wedding dress. Alan's parents were arrested for arson and assault and they were both sent to prison. Even after they got out of jail, they still had to pay $300,000 for the designer dress that they burned. Life was not going to be easy for them anymore. As for me, I was reminiscing about my wedding with Melanie. I still can't get over how gorgeous the dresses that you designed for my wedding were. Thank you so much for doing this for me. This was the best gift ever. But I feel bad about accepting a dress that's so expensive. Are you sure that you don't want me to return it to you? Yes, I'm sure. I want you to keep it. And I designed the dress for you, so I don't want anyone else to wear it. After all, you were the one that convinced me to become a fashion designer in the first place. If it weren't for your support, I wouldn't have been able to come this far as a designer. So thank you. I'm so grateful to have you in my life. Honey, you're too sweet. Can I apologize to you for something though? What is it? I had a craving for potato chips after my wedding and I ate some. And when I did, I got some grease on my beautiful dress. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. You what? I'm so sorry. It's okay. That's a pretty funny story. So like you. I need to go wash my face now. Melanie, are you okay? I had a feeling that Melanie was really upset about me getting grease on the dress that she designed for me. Ouch! What's happening, Melanie? She took off her glasses. How dare you eat potato chips wearing that famous dress that I designed for you? Couldn't you have resisted potato chips for one day? Don't you have any self-control? I won't forgive you for this. You're a potato chip junkie. You really do turn into a completely different person without your glasses. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Would you like some of my potato chips? They'll calm me down. I'm mad at your obsession with potato chips. You can't use them to try to calm me down. What are you going to do to make up for the fact that you made my dress dirty? Uh... Ellen, I'm home. Ellen, I need your help. Melanie took off her glasses again. I bet you did something bad to make her angry, though. And I bet it has something to do with potato chips. So you're not gonna help me, then? You need to deal with this on your own! After that, Melanie lectured me what felt like hours. And Alan just sat there watching me get scolded. In this moment, I'm kind of having a rough time, but apart from that, I'm very happy to have both Alan and Melanie in my life. My career as an illustrator is going really well, too. I'm grateful for my happiness, and I'm going to work even harder to become happier. Trouble busters. Helen, are you even listening to anything that I'm saying? Helen, will you help me put Melanie's glasses back on? She's really scary without them. I think it's about time that someone told you off for eating too many potato chips. I think you need to be scolded a little longer for Melanie's message to kick in. Oh. 